So today we're taking a look at another sound effects Dalek. Now, I've been taking a look at a few over the past sort of couple of weeks by a few, I think I actually mean one. Or did I look at... No, no one looked at one. But here we have the Invasion one. The Dalek from the Dalek Invasion of Earth back in 1964. Or was it five? No, it was four. Uh, now this is quite a special figure in a way, as it was a first. Now a lot of the other ones had kind of been released before, and some of them were in fact had completely been released before. Whereas this one was one of the newer variants, uh, as we'd never seen a drone from the story. We had had the Source of Pilot and the Source of Commander, which are technically the same thing, but I won't bore you with that now. If you really are interested in that, my Dalek Collector Set 2 review goes into detail of why that's a thing. This is the first time we'd seen a drone. So, obviously the articulation, it's a Dalek figure. The eye stalk can move, head can do a 360. We have movable plunger, movable gun. We have 360 wheel and then two like that. Uh, and then, of course, we have the on and off switch, as is a sound effect. We'll leave it on, though, because, you know, we're going to be talking about it. Also, that's the battery compartment there, which I assume, if it works like the radio control ones, uh, it's not going to be too hard to replace the batteries in these if they go dead. Because the way the radio control ones would work, you'd take that out and they'd, uh, they'd fit in vertically. You know, like a couple of double A's. So, it shouldn't be too hard to replace, which would be nice. So, they'll always be saying the wrong phrases. Now, as the 60s chip goes, it's quite good, uh, considering, you know, the other ones aren't the best. But before we get into that, we'll look at the detail of the figure. Now, up until this point, invasion, the Dalek Invasion of Earth figures had been two separate pieces. A Dalek glued onto this base, whereas this is now one piece. As you can see, there is no line here. Uh, this is because for the electronics to work, it had to be one moldy piece of plastic. It could not be different, which gives it um, possibly less accuracy uh, when you think about it, because a lot of them would have most likely just been a dead planet Dalek stuck onto this base. So, you know, yeah, I think you can take that as you, as, uh, you will. I don't really care, because I'm not quite that pedantic with stuff. And I think it looks nice. It looks more, a lot more, you know, professional rather than having the line because where you can clearly see it's just another toy on a bit of plastic. Uh, the black itself is a very nice colour and it's all been very nicely sculpted. It's all roughly the right shape. And at the back, of course, we have the sort of odd shape here. As you can see, it's sort of, it's sort of like, sort of um, an enlargement to the base. So in the base, as you can see, uh, the shape, it goes line, uh, and then a longer line, then another line. Do you get what I'm trying to say? I don't know how I put this into words. But yeah, they've changed it to fit the base, basically. Then the Daleks, um, Darkanium, I guess, if you want to be pedantic and we'll call them. All that, really, the plates and the uh, egg cups. All nicely done, except for there's a few paint uh, bodges, especially there. You can see it's quite a bad one. Um, there's a, a few missing bits of paint here and there. And this was mainly just put on display, so it's not really been played with at all. But yeah, you've got some silver there. But it's, it's all in all, it's quite nice, to be honest. You know, I do... I do like it. Now, of course, we have the loose one here, which has the sound effects. And these loose ones always have, uh, all the sound effect ones always have this weird sort of ring around them, which never really went over in the other one. But, yeah, it, I don't know why it's there. It, is it something to do with how you manufacture a button onto a toy? I don't know. But, yeah, also the silver is very nicely done with the sort of sparkle in it, which you, I'd assume they had. Otherwise, it seems like a bit of a waste um, of paint, really, to make it sparkle if it didn't. Just a thought. Uh, then we have. Let me. Oh. Well, now he said his piece. I'll talk more. And then we have the. Um, oh my god, it's all going wrong. We have the shoulder section. There you go. I know I come up with a phrase for it. Which has obviously the gun and the plunger. Now the plunger is very nice. Although it would have been nice to maybe see a silver sort of dot there, as that's how they were kind of made. There was sometimes silver dots there. The gun itself is very nice. This is obviously pre. When with the new ones, I guess, yeah, pre Day of the Daleks, so, oh no, pre, ooh, what, sorry, where did they have the, I say newer, the more classic ones, is it the Chase, it's either the Chase, or is it Power, hmm, I'm not too sure, but yeah, this is like the original guns, so it has the more metallic, I prefer the original guns, as they look a bit more menacing, rather than just being, you know, more egg whisk. This is less egg, wh esk, egg whisk like, in my opinion. And from the front, it's quite thin. It's all it needs to be. I don't quite like how the new series ones appear to be a bit more chunky. It's, I prefer the thinner ones, myself anyway. And then we have the sort of the light silver with the um, shinier silver there. And we also have the radar dish, which has always been painted this silver colour, but now this colour. I don't know why. Maybe it was the same colour as this. I guess you could probably tell on black and white. 
But yeah, I'm not too sure how accurate that is. Also, the dot there, which I guess would be the screw that kept it in. An interesting thing, though, is there's no sort of a detail of screws here. Now, if we have a look at a picture of a Dalek from this time, or if you did, you would see that around this section you have some screws which screw it together, which would be nice attention to detail. It wouldn't look odd, as I think it would give it more of a menacing look, to be honest, to have a bunch of bolts in your chest. Uh, and I think it's a bit of a missed opportunity. I can see why they probably didn't do it, because if it wasn't on the original sculpt, these were made for the mass market, so making new sculpts, you know, was, you know, a bit more time consuming. Considering they'd already had to fix this problem, I think they probably hadn't, didn't have enough money to spend on it. I'm sure maybe if someone figured it out, they or someone knew they'd love to do it, but they didn't, and that's, I guess, the way we've got to live with it. It's no big issue, it's just, you know, something that could have been done. The neck bins have been very nicely done. As you can see, they're pretty much aligned, although in some places they aren't. But what I mean by aligned, if you don't know, is this silver sort of straight line here. Sometimes, on some ways, a good example. This one, you can see it's a little bit off to that side, so it doesn't quite look like they're in line. Uh, but it's normally pretty good. Uh, but you can see, again, again, another one, that top one's not quite in line. Yeah, nothing too bad. It doesn't really take away from the figure unless you're really looking at it in detail. But yeah, and the neck bins themselves have been painted really nice. And only really that one's got a bit of a gash on it. But nothing fi unfixable. The dome's quite nice. Really, I don't know, should these have orange? Um, I've seen some photos colorized, whether they are actual color or colorized photos with orange on. So it's like, mm, it, I don't know. It looks fine without them, but it's more of, you know, is this accurate or not? Which I guess a lot of Doctor Who fans, you know, we'd like them to be accurate. The Ash Talk is very nice. We have the black line, and then with the silver, the blue, um, what would you call them? Rings, there we go. And then the Ash Talk, the silver, the black and the white. The white circle is another, it's got some bits of black on which really do take away from it, because the white eye stalkers, you know, is really menacing, you know, it's really dead behind the eyes. The sort of, when they got more of an, a pupil, it looked a little bit more alive, I guess is the right thing. And with the new series now, the fact it's blue, it just, it seems like, like with the Cybermen with the teardrop eyes, it gives them some emotion, you don't, I don't know what, but it's something, uh, but you know it shouldn't be there if you looked at an original. Like, that's why the Tomb ones are, like, the most terrifying, because they have... No emotion at all. Whereas his new ones just like they're crying. It's like it's uh, you know. I mean, I guess it's metaphorically trying to say that inside they are dead and crying and you know scared. But it doesn't need to be put on there, you know. Ugh, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, it's really nice, really nice looking figure. Now the sound effects we have the following. Yeah, kind of sixties. It doesn't sound like the sixties Daleks at all. Yeah. Daleks will destroy all life. Yeah. This one's okay. Hmm. I don't know. This next one I don't remember being said. This this next one is probably the best. Probably the best thing about the figure. Daleks conquer and destroy. No, they did really say power the Daleks one. With I'm guessing this chip, and I'd love to get that because that is probably one of my favourite Dalek quotes. As it's just, I don't know, it's really, it's really cool. And then, full circle. Once again, we can double hit and... That's not their noise, but oh well. That's more of the 70s one, really, I, I guess, you know, you could probably say. Also, for once the shadow's being picked up, it never does that. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, so it's not the best sound chip, but then again, you know, it's more of a novelty. I'm more interested in the figures. But the thing about it, it gives it a nice weight, which makes it feel more quality, which is, you know, always good. But of course, if you have to display this figure, you have to display it like this. You have to have the sucker up. Because the thing about the story, you know, they don't really do it that much, but it's got to be up. You know, is it a Nazi sort of thing? Yeah, of course they were based on the Nazis. Of course it's a sort of Nazi cliche thing. But it's so Dalek to have your plunger up, I think. Yeah, that's how I display um, all my Invasion Daleks. But yes, yeah, so that is the review on the Dalek Invasion of Earth sound effects Daleks. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please comment and subscribe. And yeah, um, I'm getting through these figures. I think I've now reviewed every single 60s figure I own, which is good. Uh, which means I'll move on to the 70s. Then this is what I'm doing. I'm just going to go through the figures I haven't reviewed. So then we have a full playlist of every classic figure I own reviewed.
which will be nice, you know, because then I can move on to maybe doing some new series and more talking videos. So, like I said, hope you enjoyed, and yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Uh, my, if you're watching this as it, the day came out, possibly a live stream tonight, because uh, it's Saturday, and, you know, we're Doctor Who fans, and we get bored very easily, so, you know, there might be one with Alfie and Lennon, I don't know. Depends who's up, depends who can do something, and depends who, who's bored. So, yeah, see you somewhere. Bye.